Hello everyone, I welcome you all in today's session of Hands-On Go Language. In today's session, let's talk about some of the basic insights of Golang by doing some hands-on coding. But before we go ahead, if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to the Edurekas YouTube channel to never miss out on any updates from us. Also, if you're looking for any of the certification courses from Edureka, do check out the link given in the description below. Let's move ahead with our agenda for today. So firstly, we'll learn how to install Golang and then we'll look at some hands-on coding about Golang. But don't just skip this further guys, because it's not just going to be a hello world program. But in this section, we'll cover a number of concepts within the code, including variable declaration and initialization, followed by data types and operators. And lastly, we'll look at control structures. So let's get ahead with some real-time coding on Golang. Let's look at the installation part first. So firstly, you need to visit the official Go website, which is golang.org and download your Golang for Windows 32 or 64 bit, or you can get it installed for your Mac version as well. So once you hit install, you can run the downloaded installer and follow the instructions next. I already have it downloaded, so by default, Go is installed in a directory specified by the Go root environment variable. So by default, Go is installed in a directory specified by the Go root environment variable. So now you need to set up a Go workspace. Go uses a workspace directory for structuring and organizing your Go code. You will need to set up a workspace directory to create and run your Go programs. Create a directory anywhere on your system wherever you want to store your Go code. This directory will be referred to as your workspace. So as you can see that Go has been installed correctly and it will display the installed Go version. So you can next write and run your code using the .go file. But before that, you need to specify the directory where the Go file exists. So for me, it exists under hello world. So I need to change the directory over here. So for me, I need to change the directory where my Go file exists. Using the cd command which stands for change the directory, I can specify the path where my Go file exists. And now that it has been done, I can run my Go file. So let's start with the variable declaration and initialization. So in Go, variables are used to store data. So variable declaration is nothing but defining a variable by specifying its name and type along with its initialization. Let's start with the coding. So the code starts with a package main statement, which indicates that this file belongs to the main package and the entry point for a Go executable program. Next, the import FMT statement is used to import the FMT package, which stands for format and provides the function of formatted input and output. In the func main guys, we have the main function, which is the entry point for the program. When the program runs, it starts executing from this function. Next, we need to declare and initialize variables separately. So here we declare the integer variable age without initializing it using the syntax var age int. Then we initialize the age variable with the value 30 using the assignment statement age is equal to 30. Then we declare the string variable name and initialize it with the value john using the syntax var name string equal to john. Then we move on to type inference where the compiler infers the data type. This method uses the short variable declaration colon equal to to declare the string variable country and initialize with the value USA. What next? The compiler automatically infers the data type based on the assigned value. Now we move on to multiple variable declaration. Here we declare two float64 variables, height and weight, and initialize them with the values as given respectively. In a single line, using the syntax var height weight float64 and the values. Next, we move on to short variable declaration in order to declare the string variable address and initialize it with the value. The short variable declaration can only be used inside the functions. Finally, we make use of the print line to print all the values of the variables. Guys, when running the code, you need to make use of integrated terminal. So you can open it under the integrated terminal. Now that we have the output which specifies age, name, country, height and weight as given. So this is about the variable declaration and initialization. Let's move on to the data types and operators. So talking about data types and operator, be it Go or like any other programming languages, data types define the type of values that the variable can hold and operators are symbols or keywords used to perform operations with these values. Let's move ahead. 
So guys, even in this code, it begins with the package declaration package main here inside the main function, variable age, price and is valid are declared along with name and initialized with their respective values. So the variable age is declared and assigned with the value 30 and so on with the price which is declared with the float 64 and assigned with the value. The variable is valid is declared using the short variable declaration colon equal to syntax. Further, calculations are performed and assigned to a variable sum, product and remainder. The FMT print line function is used to print the values as specified for the above variables to the console. It takes one or more arguments separated by commas and then displays them in the console output. For here, we print the values of age, price, is valid, name, sum, product and remainder. Now that we run this in integrated terminal, here we have the output which specifies age as 30, price as 9.99 and so on. So guys, this was pretty much about the data types and operators. Let's move at the control structures in the end. So in this function guys, two variables x and y are declared and initialized using the variable declaration syntax. Now that we use the control structure next, the code then proceeds with the if else statement to compare the values of x and y, then it prints the message based on the comparison result. Firstly, if x is less than y, it then prints the same. Now the next statement, we use else if. So now if x is greater than y, it prints the same under else if. If neither of the above conditions are true, it prints x is equal to y. So now that we have this condition sorted, we make use of a for loop which is used to iterate from 0 to 4. In each iteration, it prints the value of i. Then a slice of integer called numbers is declared and initialized with the value. So now another for loop with a range keyword is used to iterate over the number slice. It assigns the index and value of each element to the variable's index and value respectively. So now in each iteration, it prints the index and value of the current element. Guys, please make sure to put the else statement right up to the bracket. Here we have the result of it. X is less than Y and all the values from 0 to 4 are printed with the index number and the value reflecting on it. So for index 0, it is value 1, for index 1, it is value 2, and so on till index 4. So guys, this is the basics of control structures. I hope you like this video, and like always, wish you happy coding and learning. I hope you have enjoyed listening to this video. Please be kind enough to like it, and you can comment any of your doubts and queries, and we will reply them at the earliest. Do look out for more videos in our playlist, and subscribe to Edureka channel to learn more. Happy learning!